Lawrence, that evens the race, Marita. She's not feeling her apples, which I think is a bad idea. Yeah. It's not gonna be as refined. Marita, I see you've left the skin on. I think it looks beautiful for the presentation. They're so thin that it doesn't even affect you. Good luck. Keep an eye on the time. This is for my mango snow. Eric's uh, really stretching himself, so I think that might impress the judges a bit more. I try to make mango snow, and it's not grinding up in the grinder. It's off. Oh, Eric, calm and cool. <laughs> Eric seems to be almost unraveling here. Eric, 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 Eric. No. Uh -oh, uh oh, uh oh. No worries. I need to show these judges that I can improve from my mistakes and I learn from them. Ten minutes! In order to make ice cream in such a short time frame, the home cooks are using liquid nitrogen. Here we go. The temperature of this clear fluid is so low that it instantly freezes the ice cream ingredients as soon as it comes in contact with them. If you don't incorporate it fast enough while you're pouring the nitrogen in, yeah. you're gonna end up with a rock. Can I take a look? It's just starting to freeze. Okay, you need more nitrogen in there. That will not set. Wow, you're doing two at the same time? You're ambitious. Do you have it on high speed or medium speed? No, no, it needs to be on low or else it'll just, like, get destroyed. Depends how fast you add the nitrogen. Yeah, I'm adding it pretty slow. All right, good luck. Thank you, Chef. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Thank you. Nice mark. Woo! Woo! You got this, girl. Eric, what else you got to do? Deep fried bananas and plate. I saw some chocolate on your uh, trolley there. You going to use that? Yeah, there's no banana split without chocolate, so I'm just going to grate some fresh chocolate over it. Now, let me give you some advice, yes, okay? Sir. Chill your plates. Okay. Chill your plates. Chill your plates. Minute 30, guys. This is amazing. She's looking confident. Ah! Very confident. 30 seconds! Oh, it's so great! Oh, it's so great! Oh, it's so great! Oh, Marita, please bring up your plates. Can you tell us about your dessert, please? I have apple crumble with coconut ice cream, a warm rum sauce, and some coconut dust on the plate. Looks good. Let's taste. Lots of good flavors there. The ice cream itself, it is that big hit of coconut. The rum sauce, you get that hit of rum. It's not too sweet. The crumble itself, crisp, crunchy, nuts toasted beautifully. The skin on the apple. I think it would have had a lot more finesse had you removed it. The ice cream is textbook. It has a great mouthfeel. It's rich. The apples have a wonderful, wonderful flavor. Absolute winner. So great job. Thanks. You seem to have this uh, fence here. And I'm saying, are you doing uh, two desserts? Does it work? It does. It certainly does. Coconut dust provides nice texture. Ice cream, bang on. I love this dessert. Thank you, Chef. Beautiful. All right, Eric, it's your turn. Please bring up your dish. Asian banana split, banana tempura, red bean and green tea ice cream, and fresh grated chocolate. Because there's no banana split without chocolate. Asian banana split. Hong Jiu Sin. You have taken all the comfort, the good of banana split, and you have put it into this dish. 
red bean, that is comfort to Chinese because we love red beans. And green tea, that's universal. You have hit it spot on. You too have done an amazing job. I find the red bean one has a little sweetness to it that I expect with a red bean. The tempura batter, it is light and airy, so it really does not hide that banana flavor. I think it's a very innovative and high-reaching dish that you've done very successfully. Eric, I think the dish is very dynamic on many levels. And actually, the ice creams both taste incredible. They're very creamy. The one flaw, though, I wish there was some more fresh fruit on the plate to cut through the richness of the ice cream and the richness of the batter. But overall, I think it's an incredible dish. Thank you, Chef. The dessert I've been working on in my head is very complicated, and I will need an hour and 15 minutes to produce it. And I have 60 minutes. Hi there, David. Hello, Chef. Walk me through each component of desserts. So the crust will be a sponge cake. And that's the foundation, the base. And that will be the base. And then the center will be vanilla cream cheese mousse. Wonderful. And that's what you're working on right now? Exactly. So does this then have to go in the freezer? Yes, into the freezer. Which is going to be the most difficult aspect of this dessert? Just bringing it all together in the time allotted. Maybe it's making your wife proud with this new and improved version of the dessert. What do you think? I hope so. <laughs> Thanks, David. Hi there, Lynn. Hi, Chef. Can you walk me through each component of your dessert, please? I have uh, pistachio brittle. My mom cooks brittle, and she puts it in tins, and that's what people want for Christmas. Wow. I also have a mascarpone mousse. This is an olive oil savory bread. We all love bread. French people love bread, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I'm making glazed apricots, and that will be served alongside Chateau de Bourgogne. Sounds like you've got a lot to deal with. Yes, Chef. And if there's anyone who can pull it off, I'm going to guess it's going to be you, Lynn. Thank you, Chef. Woo! I'm working on lemon curd. Every move I make needs to be intentional. I don't have the time to make mistakes. 15 minutes! There's 15 minutes left! Oh, what did he put in there? Curd. He just realized he didn't cook it. I stuck a raw lemon curd into the freezer. I need to cook that. I am in full panic mode. He is really cutting this close. I'm not sure he's gonna make it. David just realized you forgot to cook. It's lemon curd. You've got to whisk everything, then let it set in the fridge, and that takes time. Ten minutes, Chef. Ten minutes left. Here we go. This is very, very close. He is really cutting this close. I see nothing, nothing on the plate. But Lynn is almost finished. Five minutes. You have five minutes left. Oh, my goodness, this is unbelievable. So finally, David is now starting to plate. He's starting to put together his dessert. You got it. Oh, my God, he's still running around. Lynn is already finished. One minute, you have one minute left. He's still got to put his meringue on. It's going to be within seconds if he pulls this off. You can do it again! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! Wow. Last dish. Win or lose, I'm happy with myself. I'm this close to the title of Master Chef Canada. David, please bring up your dessert. My dessert is a lemon curd parfait on a graham cracker sponge base with meringue. Are you as surprised as we are that you pulled this off? 
I wasn't going to give up. Not today. No way. Can't wait to try it. I really adore all the flavors. The presentation to me is unique. There's so many textures happening here. You have crunchy from the meringue, soft from the mousse. The cake is sensational, flawless. You know, David, I am impressed. You really elevated your wife's lemon dessert here. The star of the show really is this lemon curd because the sharpness and the sweetness, that balances perfectly. This, to me, is heaven in a spoon. The mousse is light and fluffy and delicate. The lemon curd, if that had not made it to the plate, this would not be a successful dessert. It's very well done. Thank you. Lynn, please bring up your dish. My dessert's a plate on a cheese plate. It has homemade chocolate olive bread, pistachio brittle, a mascarpone mousse, candied apricots, and my favorite cheese, Chateau de Bourgogne. Well, Lynn, this is an intelligent dessert. The chocolate bread with the pistachio and the olive goes very nicely with that salty cheese and the apricot. That's delicious. This is a plate I would like to share my friends. Lynn, the mascarpone mousse. Mascarpone can be extremely rich and heavy, but you were able to present it in a way that delivered a featheriness to it. My only comment would be of the brittle, because that was the sweetest element. I felt it was a little bit of the odd man out. But everything else is really very, very good. Lynn, you've done something very, very rare on this cheese board. You've mixed two ingredients that work so beautifully together, the olives and the chocolate. It's actually one of the most memorable things I've had in the entire competition. I would serve that in my restaurant any day. Jeremy. Hi, Jeff. Do you feel like the underdog in the dessert competition? I've always felt like the underdog, especially when it came to baking, but more so now that I'm going up against Mary. This is beautiful. Look at that. Fresh jackfruit. You are really cooking with the Philippines in mind, and your mother in mind. Yes, Incredible. all these flavors, every single component on the, this dish reminds me of her. Good luck. Thank you. Mary, Hello. how are you doing? Are you feeling confident? I am feeling confident. I'm confident with my flavors. It's going to be tasty and different. How do you feel about what Jeremy's doing? His dessert sounds incredible. It does sound incredible, and it's a lot of flavors I've never worked with before. He has a beautiful, beautiful palette. I'm gonna have to run to the blast chiller, I'm sorry. No Don't drop it. I'm worried, I'm worried about this. She's gotta get here fast, so that's gonna burn. Are you concerned about this at all? No, no? this is actually okay. doing exactly what I wanted to okay, do. Okay, good, you had me worried for a second. <laughs> this is uh, just cream with a bit of sugar and salt, and I'm cooking the heck out of it. It's a brown butter crumb to go under my ice cream. It's really tasty, mm. trust me. How close do you think this competition is right now? Super close. Super close. Like super close. And I am feeling it. I'm gonna let you focus on your dessert. <laughs> Thank you. The whole competition is riding on this dessert. Look what Jeremy's doing. He's layering flavor after flavor after flavor. That's going to be exciting to eat. Running to get the ice cream. The galleries are looking in amazement right now. They must be really jealous because we get to eat this and they don't. One minute, you have one minute left. Come on, one minute.
I am so happy with my final dish. This dessert is beautiful, and it's exactly how I wanted it to look. I've never plated a dessert this beautiful before. This dessert shows how far I've come. Jeremy, please bring up your dishes. Milk tea panna cotta. On top is a coconut tapioca topped with fried plantains with a jackfruit ice cream. Well, Jeremy, I think you've created something that is completely and utterly original. So let's dig in. You know, Jeremy, all that different texture is coming together. You know, to me, that is genius. This is not at all too sweet, too sour. It's very difficult to bake panna cotta with milk tea because it has to be very, very strong. And of course, being at the bottom of the dessert, so you're gonna hit that last. Now, that, I guess you could have made that slightly stronger, heavier on the teeth, but I just wanna take spoonful and spoonful. I love it. Thank you, chef. When I watched you prepare it and I heard you describe it, I didn't understand it. I don't like this at all. I love it. Thank you. It speaks to me in so many different levels. Texturally, it's incredibly advanced. The flavors just keep changing and morphing. The top layer has that beautiful tapioca, which I love. And then when you think you figured it out, you dig a little deeper and you find this beautiful tea and milk panna cotta. I've never had anything like it. You took all the flavors that your mom introduced to you and you've just created a new dessert. Incredible. Thank you, chef. It is so light and so unique and interesting. The tapioca pearls have a wonderful mouthfeel. You sort of want them to dance around on your palate as you taste that little bit of coconut. You then have that refreshing citrus layer that is so bright and clean, yet still light. This is a great dessert. Thank you, chef. Mary, please bring your dessert up. I made a blueberry financier with some brown butter crumb, some kettle corn for the plate, a blueberry sauce for the bottom, and a buttermilk corn ice cream. All right, let's taste. You know, Mary, the sophistication, you know, really appeals to the professional side of me. But that popcorn, you know, I want to dive in like a kid. <laughs> All the flavors, they all come together. I can taste the corn, I can taste the maple syrup, the crunchiness, the different textures. So everything in this plate works. Thank you so much, Chef. Mary, this is truly a lovely little dessert. The actual cake itself has a sort of a humble quality to it, but with your presentation, you've been able to elevate it. The financier cake has a little bit of a lemony touch to it. It has a little bit of that cornmeal, which adds a nice little texture crunch to it. Beautiful blueberries in there. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Everything works so well together. The corn ice cream is incredibly intense. I like the way you reinforced the theme of the corn ice cream with popcorn. It feels like a road trip. Going up to your cottage, stopping off, picking up some blueberries, grabbing some corn. Amazing. In fact, I'd love to have it on my menu at my restaurant. I think it's playful, it's intelligent. It's all those things you want in a dessert. Thank you so much. I'm doing a play on a fallen ice cream cone with the flavors of chocolate and mint. Trevor. Yes, How chef. you doing? I'm doing all right, chef. Tell me, what are you making? So right now I'm making a creme fraiche whipped cream with no sugar. It's going to be very tart because I have a really, really rich dark chocolate mint ice cream going with this. Going back to my childhood, this is a, a play on. The kid just gets his ice cream cone at the stand and he drops it. It's all over the sidewalk. It's going to be very abstract and splattery. I like where you go with food. There's always a concept behind it. Let me ask you, though, do you think that this is elevated enough to win the trophy and the title? 100% chef. This is going to be a knockout dessert, but showing restraint and sophistication at the same time. Let me give you some advice. Don't look back, just keep looking ahead. Thank you, Chef. It means a lot to me. Looking good, Trev. 
Hi, Taya. Chef Alvin. So what are you doing? Right now, I am working on a sponge toffee. OK. So you're doing an elevated coffee dish, right? More the flavors that are in traditional Mexican coffee, orange, cinnamon, chocolate. I love the orange and the coffee. Sounds amazing. Do you drink a lot of coffee? I love coffee. You're becoming a chef already. I can tell you, chef just drank coffee all day long. <laughs> There's a lot of component in this dish. Remember, you only have 20 minutes. Yes. Thank Good you, luck. chef. You know, I'm a bit worried. There's a lot of element on that plate, Ugh. and I hope hey, uh, that's the energy for sure. I'm going to die. So Trevor he is making pizzelles. It is really, it's like an Italian wafer-thin cookie that can be shaped once it's hot into a cone. Perfect for ice cream. Ten, yeah, let's go! On. Ten minutes! Taya's cake is out of the oven now. That's going to be a sigh of relief for her. I need to cool my cakes. Now I need to plate. I'm good. Look at the way Trevor's plating. Trevor is an artist. My hands are shaking like a leaf. I know I need to make sure my plating is absolutely beautiful. Just five minutes left. In five minutes, the MasterChef Canada kitchen will be closed. I go to my ice cream machine, and it's nowhere near being frozen. How's it looking, Trev? <laughs> Trevor is starting to panic because his ice cream is not setting. He's not going to have enough time to set it. If I don't nail this ice cream, I just have a chocolate puddle on a plate. His MasterChef journey could end right now. Oh, God. The ice cream is the star. I need to get this ice cream really cold. He's only got four minutes left. My only option is liquid nitrogen. It's a crazy gamble. I've never worked with it before. Let's give it a shot. Trevor is really thinking like a chef and adapting to the situation. Using liquid nitrogen is always risky, but it's either try it or serve as soup. Brilliant. Two minutes. You only have two more minutes left. Two minutes. Come on, girl, you can do it. I'm gonna do a little mousse. Oh my god, that looks amazing. That ice cream and that liquid nitrogen, it's gotta come out right about now, otherwise it will be like a rock. One problem turns into another. The mold is so frozen that it's actually rock solid. I can't get the ice cream out of the mold, but I gotta keep pushing hard to get this dessert. So Trevor's just come back from the equipment room with a torch. So now he's heating the bottom of that silicone mold, which should release the ice cream. He is not giving up and needing a shake. Taya has just bought her ice cream from the blast freezer, and she has Jesus. one minute to make canals and get it on the plate. This is so much pressure that I got to shake it off because I need to make the best damn dessert that these judges have ever tasted. There we go. There you go. It's coming out. Yay! Wow. He's doing it. Now, it's time to taste your third and final course. Please follow us into the banquet room to present your dishes. I put my heart on this plate. Good or bad, I stand by my plate today. I never in a million years would have imagined I could do the things that I've done here. It's mind-blowing. <gasps> Trevor made a better competitor out of me because I had to push myself really hard to compete with him. Hearing Taya's feedback on her dishes, it makes me really nervous. Her flavors are in your face and bold, and I had more subtle flavors. It could go either way. Trevor, please describe your dessert. What you have in front of you is a chocolate mint gelato with a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone and a creme fraiche whip. Let's try this dessert. You know, this dish really resonates with me. 
The ice cream is obviously a bit hard. It's a bit too frozen. That's a common mistake when you're working with liquid nitrogen. However, having said that, the flavor that you have is divine. Great balance of chocolate and mint. Really playful. I love it. Thank you very much. Great flavors. That big, bold, bitter chocolate with fresh poppy mint, which is a perfect combination. You have the balance just right. In the ice cream, I taste a bit of salt, and that's a very good idea. That little bit of salt brings out that chocolate even better. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you, Chef Alan. All right, Taya, tell us about your dessert. My dessert is a play on a cafe de olla. So I did a orange cake with a sponge toffee, dark chocolate mousse, and a cinnamon ice cream. Mm. Watching the judges is like the worst and the best all wrapped together because you really don't know what they're thinking. It's like an emotional roller coaster. Taya, first thing, I gotta compliment you on your plating. Thank you, Chef. You've been able to create a great sense of balance, proportion, color to create this one dessert. And that's, that's not easy. The flavors are classic Taya. They're big, they're bold. There's a lot of flavor happening on one plate. Taya, you got a lot of lovely elements on this dish. Ice cream, cinnamony, smooth, creamy. The caramel is buttery, but what was the name of the dessert? Cafe de Oya. I did not get the cafe. But overall, great job. But I would have preferred a little bit more coffee in my coffee dessert. Understood, Chef. What you making there, Becky? Twigs. My dessert is going to be a fallen apple, like one that's freshly fallen off a tree. It's an apple panna cotta. The core is going to be an apple jelly with toasted pineapple seeds, and then a swig made out of this dough and a sugar leaf. If any one of these steps goes wrong, it's gonna ruin the entire dessert. It's a lot to do with just one hour. What is that, Andy? It's gonna be a crumb. I know Becky is gonna go very high concept with her dessert. So what I'm gonna do is go homey and gooey and delicious. Hey, mama. Hi, boo. Since I was a kid, mom would always make this thing that they call in Newfoundland a tout, basically dough, fried in a pan with a bunch of butter and served with baked beans. What I'm doing here is incorporating molasses and sugar and gonna turn it into a donut. This is for my mom and my whole family in Newfoundland. She's really pleased to see me do this. The panna cotta, I would say, is probably the most difficult element of Becky's dish. The key is to make sure that you don't put too much gelatin into the mixture for your panna cotta, otherwise it'll make it way too stiff. I have to get the malted pastry cream out of the way because it has to cool in the fridge. What is happening? Just take it out and use a knife. This is ridiculous. Breathe, dude, breathe. This should be incredibly easy to just put plastic wrap over this pastry cream, and I'm battling with it. <laughs> Lots of time. Don't lose it now. Good job, Andy. Yes, it's a nice hustle. I think I'm just exhausted. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. I want to show the judges a completely different type of dessert. I can never afford culinary school, so the only food knowledge that I had was through cookbooks. And now this experience has opened up a whole new world for me. Yeah, I don't think Becky's future is in construction anymore. Hello, hey Becky. So what do you make me for pudding? <laughs> As you know, pudding, that's what we Brits call dessert. What are you making for dessert? I'm going to do a fallen apple. So it's an apple panna cotta with an apple jelly core with some toasted pine nuts in it. Nice. And then this is going to be like the ground. The soil? Yeah. Wonderful. Is there anything a little extra that you're going to do to this dessert? I'm going to do a gel glaze. And the glaze is going to be going onto the apple itself? Yeah. Sounds like the perfect ending to your apple-themed three-course menu. <laughs> Smells good, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. You got this, Becky. You got this, Becky. I have to 
start working that dough and incorporating the molasses and brown sugar mixture I have. Fold it over as many times so you have those layers, and then just let the dough rest a little bit to get softer. Annie. Chef. What's going on with dessert? I'm gonna do uh, a Newfoundland donut. Newfoundland donuts. Oh, is that the one with just the hole? <laughs> I've been to Newfoundland. I've never had a Newfoundland donut. So tell me, what is a Newfoundland donut? It's one of my favorite memories of having this fried piece of bread. They call it a touten. And okay. dipping it in baked beans. Okay, I love baked beans. <laughs> this one is... Uh, uh, molasses kind of folded into a donut dough, fried with some brulee rhubarb. Okay. There's going to be a nice crumb. I'm going to yes. try to make this more homey, make it remind you guys of your childhood, and just make it feel ooey gooey. Don't mess up. I won't. Yeah, keep it going, Andy. Keep it going. Keep going. I chose some pine nuts and put them in the jelly core, and they represent the seeds in a natural apple. Brilliant. How ingenious is that? The apple jelly is not set enough, so the pine nuts keep floating back up. It's like a whack-a-mole. I have no idea if this dessert is going to work until, like, the last minute. Five minutes left. This will be your last five minutes in the Master Chef Canada Kitchen. They're perfectly golden brown. If you have extra donuts, throw a couple of them up here. <laughs> She's just taking a small piece of her panna cotta and doing a little test of her glaze. This dessert has to be perfect. I'm going to ditch the glaze. I don't really like it. Look, look, Becky just threw away her apple glaze. She's just thrown it out. Wow. No more apple syrup? No. She has a lot of suspense coming from a 19-year-old. If something doesn't work, she takes it out of the picture. Two minutes! You only have two, two minutes, minutes left! Two minutes! Two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. I know my daughter, she's focused, she knows what she's doing, and she's gonna get it done. So close, I can't believe this is real. I'm just a bag of nerves right now. to present this dessert, but it's nerve-wracking getting the feedback. Becky, please describe your dessert. My dessert is a fallen apple. It's a apple panna cotta with an apple jelly, a soil, a sable twig, and a sugar leaf. Where's the glaze? I just thought it would be too fake, that red color from food coloring, so I just wasn't comfortable serving it. Nothing wrong with that. If it doesn't belong there, don't put it there. Let's dig in. The flavors are somewhat familiar, yet unique and different. Familiar as far as the panna cotta with the apple jelly within it. The soil has a deep, rich flavor to it that is such a strong anchor to this dish. This is one of the most original desserts I've had anywhere. There's a lot going on, but you can sense what is going on. So nothing is overpowering. And I like the journey you have taken us on with the apple. All right, Andy, tell us about your desserts. It's a malt pastry cream with a molasses brown sugar rolled Newfoundland touten, some brulee rhubarb, and then wheat cereal and ginger snap crumb. Looking at it, I would love to dig into that. Let's try it out. That rich, decadent, malted milk pastry and that familiar taste of rhubarb, which is slightly acidic, but so complimentary and beautiful. This is a titan of Towton's. I didn't think that rhubarb would work with port because one is very sweet and elegant and the other is very rustic. But that marriage 
does come together. I think it's one of your finest moments. I do wish that there was maybe a sorbet that cut through the dense nature of the donut, but it really delivers. Thank you, chef. Oh, that's nice. This is like the home stretch. I really hope that the judges enjoyed what I made for them. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh my God, I really wish I could hear what the judges said about my dishes. I know I did them well, so hopefully they see that. These home cooks have been cooking solidly for two hours. The pace has been brutal. They cannot lose that momentum right now. It's crucial. It comes down to this very last dish, dessert. Is that rice? Yeah, yeah. You're puffing the rice? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, nice. Jennifer's doing a take on sugary breakfast cereal. I love breakfast cereal. Many a chef finish their night with a bowl of sugary cereal. It's more Saturday night than Saturday morning. Good. Puffy. And Andre is doing an elevated version of a classic Filipino dish. I'm making a deconstructed taron. A taron is a plantain coated in brown sugar and wrapped in a spring roll and fried. Hey there, Andre. Hi, chef. So was this something that you would eat uh, growing up? Since I met my wife, her mom has made it for me almost every single week. So how are you going to make it really special? The Jamaican part of this is the grapefruit soda snow. And I have a stout and coconut condensed milk sauce here. And I have a nice Irish moss red seaweed ice cream to go with it. They sound like amazing, unusual ingredients all coming together. Yes, chef. Good luck. This is my first time making ice cream and the grapefruit snow. And yeah, I just hope it turns out well. If I'm going to serve the judges treat cereal in the finale, I better make sure that there's some good technique in that bowl. Let's see what happens here. I'm making a chocolate crumble, meringue marshmallows, a sugar cured egg yolk with a brulee, chocolate ganache, and tea smoked milk. Jennifer, Hello, chef. I'm gonna How tell are me. You? You know, why tea smoked milk? Something that I think is so nice after a meal is a sweet and a tea. And I use my favorite tea, which is birthday cake flavored. I just think it pairs really well with this. You got a lot going, you got a lot of treats coming. I can't wait to taste this. Yes, chef. How do you think of smoking milk? Oh, I don't, I don't know what happens in there, really. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Look, Andre is using five spice powder to flavor his waffle. What a great idea. And five spice is used a lot in Chinese cuisine. What I love about this waffle is I've never seen a Chinese five spice waffle before. Five spice is similar to all spice. It's quite strong. It's got to be very careful. Use too much, it's going to be bitter and nasty. OK, that's the last one, man. Both Andre and Jennifer have a multitude of garnishes and ingredients to finish their dessert. They really need to move fast and efficiently right now. I'm just flipping the sugar-cured egg yolks to make sure they all get enough time in the sugar. Putting it under the sugar, it creates a light skin around that egg yolk so it doesn't burst. I'm going to melt some sugar and do a little brulee on top of it for a bit of crunch. Nice. Woo! Ten minutes. Ten minutes left for dessert. Keep going. Keep going. It is neck and neck in this kitchen right now. They have just under ten minutes left. This dessert is pretty bold. It looks very simple, but it's pretty complex. Oh, shoot. That one's not ready. I'm going to refreeze this. My grapefruit ice isn't frozen very solid. And I'm worried that I'm not going to have enough time. You can see how hard Andre is working. My entire MasterChef journey is riding on this one dessert. The final dish, your dessert, has to be ready in two minutes. You got it, Dre. Come on. Two minutes? Got no. Oh, that's nice. I cannot find words to describe how I feel. I've never been so proud of Andre in my life. Come on, Andre. Go for it. Looks great, Jennifer. Just to see Jennifer in her element doing what I've always known her capable of doing is amazing. Woo! One minute. You only have one more minute left. Come on, one minute. Come Let's on, go. Get it out. Come on, guys. Look how soft that ice cream is that Andre's scooping out. It looks gorgeous. Whoa, let's go! Wow. These dishes look pretty incredible to me. Yes, Jennifer! 15 seconds! Finish strong, finish strong. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! 
Andre, please tell us about your dessert. Today, I have a deconstructed toron. I paired it with a stout sauce, also a Chinese five-spice waffle, some caramelized plantains for the crunch, and the snow is a grapefruit soda snow. I'm a sucker when it comes to the desserts, and I just love a really well-presented dessert. And this looks inviting. It looks fresh, it looks clean. Well done. Thank you, chef. Andre, I love the different elements in here. You have the Caribbeans, you have the Philippines, you have the Chinese all put together. But what I like is the balance of spice as it goes from the ice cream with the Irish moss with the nutmeg. And then it goes to five spice into the waffles. And then you end it with the grapefruit. A great blend of spices, of different textures. Just a small tip. It's so missing a little bit of salt because sometimes on a very rich dish like that, salt can cut it down and bring out more from the spices. Okay. The ice cream, it's just perfect. Perfect consistency, flavor, texture. That is a great ice cream. With the backdrop of the wonderful crumbs, which does represent sand in a kind of way, it's part of the Caribbean. It's certainly what I look for when I go to the Caribbean. <laughs> This dish to me is modern Jamaican. It is really sophisticated, but yet it's very playful. And I see that you really pushed yourself to hit a new height. It's amazing to see just how far you've come. It's amazing. Thank you, chef. Watching the judges taste my dessert was a real treat. It feels great that they understand exactly what I tried to do. Jennifer, please describe your dessert. Tonight, I've made one of my favorite dishes, treat cereal. There's a chocolate soil in the bottom. I've puffed a variety of different rices. I've made some marshmallow meringue. There's a chocolate ganache bed for the sugar-cured egg yolk. And I've tea-smoked milk. This isn't just a dessert. This is an experience. Oh. <laughs> wow. Jennifer, that first mouthful is a bit of a mystery as to what's in there. The second mouthful, it starts to define each flavor and texture. That subtlety of the smoke of the milk, that rich, complex flavor of the ganache, the texture of the puffed rice. There's something grown up about it. If there was one adjustment, one caveat, mm -hmm. I would like just a little more sweetness but it really is a tremendous dessert. Thank you, Chef. All these sweet cereals that I miss as a kid, the ones I crave, I recognize it all here. So my dream has come true, but in a sophisticated adult way. Oh, thank you, Chef. This dessert is absolute creativity. It's somebody who's really mastered technique, flavor. You can't teach this. This is one of the most original desserts I've ever had. Thank you, Chef. I kind of just wanted to give them some of the sense of wonder I have felt the entire time I was here. I'm just so happy. Oh.